Hey, I'm Paul the Motor Guy, and welcome to my channel, where I pass on riding tips, practice drills, and defensive riding strategies. Now, I'm a rider coach, a motorcycle sergeant, and owner and instructor at Pro Rider Center Texas, where we teach police riding skills to civilian riders. In this video, I'm going to take you out on a quick ride with me in the street. Now, while I'm riding, I will share some defensive riding strategies I use, as well as anything else that comes up. The streets is where things really count. So let's gear up and go for a ride. All right, guys, welcome again. We're out here on the road. It's a little windy, so I hope this turns out okay. But I want to hit the road again here to do a little, another little ride out. Because as much as you guys know, I'm a big fan of practice, practice, practice. When it comes to your skills, I think the mental approach to riding is just as important. So we're gonna go for a little ride today. Point out a couple of things that I use, some things that I do. See what we encounter today. So sit back and let's go for a ride. Let me also say that I'm very, very appreciative of my supporters I have on my channel, my subscribers. Can I tell you how much it means to me? You know, just starting out doing this stuff here with some of the big guys that's been doing it for a while. It's kind of intimidating, so I really, really appreciate it. And I really do take all your comments to heart. And it means a lot to me. My goal is just to give back. Now the first thing let me say is, is uh, I'm gonna talk about is is my downshift and first coming to stop. I had somebody ask me about that and normally I like to get in the first gear as soon as I can if I know I'm gonna stop. Like this red light here. As you can see, I'm already in first gear and I'm about 30 miles an hour. So I try to get in the first gear as soon as I can. That way I know that by the time I'm stopped, I can pull off if I need to. The vehicle behind me is not stopping, I can pull off. I'm already in first gear. Now that speed may vary. Sometimes it's maybe 20 miles an hour or so, but I guess the point is that I'm in first gear early enough to where if a car behind me is not stopping, I can pull off. Now I want you to also notice my distance behind this truck. Very important. A lot of us get too close behind the vehicles in front of us. I did a Another video on rear and crash avoidance where I talk about this. So if you haven't seen that, go check it out. I'll leave a link up top and in the description below. But you have to give yourself room to be able to maneuver around this truck if someone behind me was not stopping. So you want to give yourself some room. Now, depending on your skill level, how much you practice this, you may not need as much room. But that's something that you need to think about. And now those of you that ride with groups, I know normally you ride staggered, but you always put up to a light side by side. So now you have to think about, you have two bikes, and what if the only escape path was to the left? That means the motorcycle on the right will have to go all the way across to the left to maneuver around. Which is a hard maneuver, especially if you're too close to the vehicle in front of you. And it's almost impossible maneuver if it's something that you don't practice. Now, let's talk about objects in back of vehicles like this truck here. This is one of my pet peeves, okay? I try to get around anything, carrying any object in the back, I try to get around as soon as I can. The first thing I do, like I did on that particular situation there, is I scanned it. It looked like everything was tied down. Watch out for this car here, just turn the left behind this truck, see it? Start switch lanes a little bit, open up my side of view. Maybe also uh, help me be seen by that vehicle as well. But let's go back to cars or trucks or trailers that's carrying objects in the back. As I approach it, I scan it. See if it looks like it's tied down. But even so, I never trust it. I never trust it. I don't know about where you live, but where I live, on the major highways, on the shoulders, that sometimes still in the middle of the road, you see ladders, I've seen AC units, I've seen a stack of wooden pallets, about, stacked about five foot tall, 
in the middle lane of a highway. So that tells me that people don't do a real good job of tying down objects. So because of that, I get around as soon as I can. Because anything in back of a trailer or a truck could be a hazard to you at any time. Now I always tell my students, if I'm in my car and I hit a ladder, I may get some damage, right? Maybe enough you have to call us to do a report. But you're probably gonna walk away from that. Whereas, on a motorcycle, the chance of going down is greater. So why even put yourself in that situation? You see here, getting into pretty heavy traffic. So I'm gonna switch lanes. I'm gonna see what these cars doing in front of me. Take my blind spot real quick. Make my lane change. That's another thing too, guys. You always wanna check your blind spots. Now I see I'm already in first gear and I was at 20 miles per hour on this particular stop. I got shifted down the first gear at 20 miles per hour. Cause I knew I was probably a good chance I was gonna come to a stop. Or very close to a stop. And there's my stop. I got a big 18 wheeler behind me. I'm checking on. He stopped. We're good. Don't forget, guys, got to check that rear view mirror. I already have my skate path. I was going to go to the left. I had plenty of room when I was stopped. You always have to plan ahead. One step ahead. For new riders, this could be overwhelming at first because you feel like you're doing a lot of things and you actually are. But the more you do it, the more it becomes habit the less effort it takes to do it. All right, guys, now I wanna talk a little bit about knowing the roadway that you're on. And then what I mean by that is that we all know that there's certain roads that we travel where drivers have certain characteristics, right? Certain driving habits. And so an example of that was going to be, I'm going to take an exit up here pretty soon. And I've studied this exit pretty, pretty thoroughly. So I know that pretty much as I exit off and this car's on the shoulder on the front of this road, probably four or five out of 10 cars are going to want to come from the front of this road and get onto this tow road. Okay. Because I've studied it. I know this. That's what drivers do in this particular uh, section. So because of that, as I take this exit, like we get ready to now, if there's a vehicle on the shoulder, not the shoulder, if there's a vehicle on the frontage, I will slow or speed up accordingly, like this car. That way I'm not riding directly next to them as they possibly want to switch over like this car just did to get onto the toll road. This car in front of me here is going to want to probably come all the way over. My rule of thumb on that is if they come one lane, I'm assuming they want to come two lanes. Now he stayed in his lane. So hey guys, I hope this video was helpful. I just want to do a little quick video, just give you some defensive riding strategies. Because again, out here is where real life is, right? This is where drivers are doing crazy things. And so I believe that your defensive riding skills need to be just as sharp as your riding skills. So I hope you learn something new. Maybe give you some ideas of things to start to put into your tool belt. And if not, maybe I just reminded you of something that you used to do that you stopped doing. Either way, it's a win-win. And I want to thank you for watching. Again, if you like this video, give it a thumbs up. And until next time, practice, practice, practice. And ride safe.